Hello there. Welcome to the Potter's Wheel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm George Osmus. I'm one of the owners of Potter's Wheel Films, and I'll be your host for the next half hour. You know, folks, addiction is running rampant in our culture. It comes in all forms, substance abuse, sexual and pornography addiction, gambling, and other addictive behaviors. A 2019 report by Recovery Centers of America estimates the total direct, indirect, and intangible costs of addiction on our economy at $3.73 trillion, that's with a T, dollars annually. So even if you haven't experienced addiction personally or through a loved one's experience, you have been impacted by the intangible costs, the crime, the poverty, the economic impact on the culture. If you're struggling with addiction in your life, I want to be clear about one thing up front. There is help for you and there is hope for you. I know because I was a nicotine addict for many years, but Jesus Christ broke that yoke off of me and set me free. With me in the studio today is, to help me with this topic is Pastor Jerry Jenkins of Sorry. Addiction Free in Christ. Pastor Jerry and I will discuss getting free from addiction on today's episode of The Potter's Wheel. The prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah compared the people of God to clay and spoke of the Lord as a master potter. On its own, clay has no form, no purpose, but in the hands of the master, it can be shaped into a design of his choosing to serve his purpose. He has a number of tools to help him in his work. Chief among them is the potter's wheel. Well, thanks for joining us here on the Potter's Wheel. Uh, as we said in the opening, addiction is serious business, and it is eating up the lives of people in and out of the church uh, all across the country. And it's, we need to know, as the people of God, how to stand up and fight back against this scourge of our times. And with me in the studio here today is Pastor Jerry Jenkins of Addiction Free in Christ. Uh, he's a man who's been around the block a time or two on addiction, knows what he's talking about, and I'm pr privileged to have him here in the studio with me to share his knowledge and his wisdom and the Word of God on this topic. Pastor, thanks for being, in, being on the show. Thank you, George. It's a pleasure being here. Now, how long have you been, uh, been ministering to to addicts in, in this 35 way. years. 35 years. Um, and uh, what, what's, your, what's your story on, on well, I mean, you, a, you've, got a, you've got a testimony of your yeah, own on this. I yes? was a serious alcoholic, smoker, drinker, whatever, gambler, um, had it all. And uh, November 9th, 1986, I went into a, a church to sell a pastor a car. I was in the car business. And uh, I sold him the car and he sold me Jesus. <laughs> and uh, the wheels have fallen off the car and the car's in the junkyard, but Jesus is still alive and well. And uh, sitting at the right hand of the Father to, you know, intercede for us in everything we do. And uh, then God gave me the vision at that time to help people find what I found. And that was in uh, January 1987. We started a program called New Wine Ministries at uh, Faith Assembly of God Church here in Quincy. A couple of years later, we changed that because we, all of a sudden, we was dealing with alcohol first. Mm -hmm. And later, we started getting people coming in that had drug addiction. So we changed that to Addicts Victorious. And uh, then uh, that we did that to 2016. And then my wife and I started Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles. Well, I would say you certainly got the better part of that deal. Yeah. Uh, the pastor got the car, and, yeah. and uh, you got the Lord. Got Jesus. And he doesn't have the car anymore, nope, but you still got right. Jesus. I still got Jesus. Which is really, you know, there's some, there's some good news for yes. you. Uh, well, I don't need to tell you, battling addiction is not easy. And oftentimes, we really need the help of a more powerful ally to come alongside of us and help us in that fight. Yeah. That's what today's clip is all about. Uh, today's clip comes from the 1991 film Terminator 2, uh, directed by James Cameron and starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Robert Patrick, and Edward Furlong. To give you a little background on the clip you're about to see, two Terminators have been sent back through time to find John Connor, the future leader of the human resistance in the war against the machines. One Terminator was sent to kill him. The other was sent to protect him. And as they say at the outset of the movie, it was only a question of which one of them would reach him first. Hey, 
a minute to talk about the prophetic interpretation of the clip. The T-800 Terminator represents Jesus. The T-1000 Terminator represents the demonic spirit attached to the addiction. The T-1000 firing his weapon at John is the urge to use, and every addict knows what I'm talking about there. Jesus wants to be our shelter during those demonic attacks, just as the T-800 sheltered John while the T-1000 was firing at him. He also fights against the enemy of our soul to set us free from the influence of hell and bring us under the life-giving influence of the Holy Spirit. He wants to be that ally we just talked about in our fight to win back control of our lives from whatever addiction we're battling. So Jerry, tell me, is that a fair picture of the heart of God toward the addict? Absolutely, and people have to understand addiction is a spiritual problem that cannot be solved by a theory of man. So the only way addiction can be solved and people can be set free is through God's Word and through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah, I've certainly found that to be true in, in my case. Yes. Um, you know, we are three-part beings, yes? Mm -hmm. We, are, we right. are a spirit, yes. we have a soul, and we live in a body. Right. And in my case, in my case, the addiction attacked all three parts of my body. Absolutely. I had a physical need for nicotine. Mm -hmm. I had a soulish need for nicotine. I mean, you know, when sure. I get when I get upset, uh, I would turn to a cigarette. Mm -hmm. I get happy, I turn to a cigarette. Sure. I get mad, I turn to a cigarette. Right. You know, um, and and then there's a spiritual aspect to it as well. You know, uh, these things they want to take you. They want to take control of your life and. Uh, really, addiction is a modern-day form of idolatry, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. 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 And the Bible so, says we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly place. And I think that's the, the big thing that, that we're missing out on in, uh, in treatment, in, right. in mental health issues right. today. You know, we've completely eradicated the idea of, of the spiritual realm and, you know, I think in, in so doing, we have opened the door to, an, to let an entire generation now be dominated by hell. That's exactly right. That's um, exactly right. So as we were talking in preparation for this show, uh, you mentioned there was a difference between recovery, which is what so many mm -hmm. uh, programs seem to be focused on, and true deliverance. Why don't right. you expand on that yeah, a little bit? There, there's a... The Bible only talks about recovery three different times, but deliverance 98 times. Our God is a God of salvation, deliverance, and healing. And so you can work recovery all you want, but you're always going to be in recovery. Once you're delivered, you're delivered and been totally set free. John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus is speaking, and he said, If you abide in my word, that's the Bible, you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And so we, once we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, and that's the key. It's not, salvation is not just saying some quick prayer because you don't want to go to hell, okay? You know, uh, get out of hell free, get out of hell free card. Mm -hmm. The salvation is when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ and let him take control of us. Then God puts his Holy Spirit in us and guides us through everything that we need to do. I, I agree 100%. Uh, you know, I was, uh, mm -hmm. when I was first born again, I knew, I knew the Lord as Savior at that point, but I was still running the show. Yeah. I was still the one making the decisions. I'm going to choose whether or not I go to church. I'm going to choose whether or not, you know, whether or not I obey God and, and, and all of this stuff. And I lived like that for a number of years and, um, you know, even wound up taking a 
a hiatus from the Lord for nearly a dozen years uh, before he finally one day, you know, jerked the slack out of me and uh, asked me point blank uh, in Luke 6, 46, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? And boy, I tell you what, that was a, that was a, a sword right through hmm. the heart of me. And it dethroned self in my life, that one question. And, and it was a game changer because from that point on, okay, now I've known you as Savior, but now I need to know you as Lord. I need to know what it means to really humble myself under the mighty hand of God and to begin uh, this process of learning how to follow him and not just uh, do my own thing and then, you know, cry out to God when it, does, when it blows up in my face. Because uh, let, me, let me tell you, that doesn't work very well for a long time. It, it might work for the short term. Do not build your life on that. Trust me, it's not going to work. Don't ask me how I know. Well, that's <laughs> surrender. You see, it's not good enough to know the Bible. I work with a lot of people who come out of prison, and they've read the Bible backward and forward. They know every word in that Bible, but they're not living it. And so it's good enough to be able to quote Scripture. It's good enough to know the Bible. But that is not going to set you free. You have to totally surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And you, just like you do, George, you have to admit, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I need help. And that's when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ. Then John 8, 36 says, If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Free indeed. And it's the work that He does, not what we do. That's right, and that's, that's exactly what got me free um, from my addiction, from my nicotine addiction, was, um, you know, it was surrender. I mean, I tried multiple times over the years in my own strength to quit smoking. Yeah. You know, I mean, it sounds like such an easy thing to do. Well, just don't, just don't smoke, just don't do it. And, you know, and I had a cousin that, uh, you know, well, why don't you just not smoke anymore? I said, okay, well, why don't you just not breathe anymore? <laughs> Because you know, because to to an addict, that's how serious it is. Right. You know, the the need to get a hold of that whatever it is you're addicted to. You know, and it can be you know it can be a substance like it was in my case. It can be alcohol. It can be illegal drugs. It can be legal drugs like nicotine, Absolutely. caffeine, sugar. Um, you know, it can also be uh, be beha be a behavioral yeah. thing. Well, uh, and the biggest problem we see today is pornography addiction. It's a fifteen billion dollar industry. And it absolutely controls everyone. Mm -hmm. And nobody understands pornography addiction, sexual addiction, or eating disorders. The thing about those is they're all what God gave us. God gave us, a, to, he, he made us. And then he said you have to eat to keep your body going. Okay? Then he told us to reproduce and, and to have children. Then we took the good things God told us to do and turned them around and the enemy got in there and turned them around to do what he wanted us to do. And so, consequently, it's one of the things destroying the church. Right now, one of every two men in church on Sunday morning are hooked on pornography. 20% of the women in church are hooked on pornography. 35% of the ministers today are hooked on pornography. And we find that uh, pornography addiction is completely out of control. It's one of the biggest problems we're facing in the United States today. But it goes back to, again, what we're doing, what the enemy is driving us to do, take away what God created us to do, and the enemy comes in and takes over and destroys everything that God created. Which, yeah, that's, that's his whole that's game. Simple. That's yeah. his whole, whole game, isn't it? Um, you know, he, he can't create anything of his own, but he's a master at perverting what God has already created and twisting it for his own purposes. You know, and you know, somebody out there might be saying, well, you know, pornography addiction, who's hurt by that? You know, what's, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. We're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. We're supposed to be in agreement with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. uh, the prophet Amos said, how shall two walk together except that they are agreed? Paul said, you are that one's slaves to whom you present your members as slaves to obey. So do you want to be a slave of Christ? Or do you want to be a slave of the devil? Because you know, they're going to, either of these two masters is going to lead you someplace. Christ is going to lead you to eternal life. The devil will. Dead meat.
We're going to take a quick break for a few words from Potter's Wheel Films. And when we come back, Pastor Jerry and I are going to talk a little bit more about how to get free from your addiction in Christ. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So what do you think a thousand pictures would be worth? At Potter's Wheel Films, we want to help you find out. We're a Christian film company. We make movies that preach the gospel, demonstrate biblical life principles, and encourage other believers in their faith walk. We're also here to help Christian churches, ministries, performing artists, and others with your digital media needs. We're ready to take on any size project, from a 30-second teaser spot to a 30-minute TV show and beyond. We want to put our tools and talent to work for you to expand your audience and increase your ministry's impact on the community. Contact us at 217-494-7798 or by email at potterswheelfilms at gmail.com and let us open the world of digital video media to you. Welcome back. And so we're here with Pastor Jerry Jenkins and we're talking about addiction. Pastor Jerry, what counsel do you give your clients to guard, help them guard against the possibility of relapse? Okay. The main thing you have to do is pray. The minute, the minute you get tempted by Satan, and you're going to be tempted, you know, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The minute he tempts you, you need to immediately start praying. And ask God, in the name of Jesus, take this desire away from me. In the name of Jesus, set me free again. And immediately he He'll answer you. You know, when we ask, Jesus said, ask anything you want in my name, and I'll do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And so we, we have to believe the Word of God, and we have to live the Word of God. We have to trust the Word of God. And the minute we're tempted, we immediately have to go to prayer. And, you know, I, uh, it, it reminds me of the strategy that James gives us in his book. He says... Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Absolutely. And I, I am here to testify those steps work if you take them in the proper order, because they, and they have to be That's done right. in order. You've got to submit to God first, then resist the devil, because if you try to resist the devil in your own strength, he's going to eat your lunch. I That's mean, right. he, the devil's much smarter than you, much more powerful than you. He's been doing this longer than you. And if you try and face him on your own terms, you're, you're going to get whooped. But if you will submit to God first, and, re and then from that place of submission to God, resist the devil, I promise you, the devil will flee. Well, one thing we have to do, George, we have to spend time in the Word. And, you know, we have to spend time in studying the Word of God. It doesn't say read to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. Today, the average Christian spends very little time in the Bible. So we have to actually study the Bible daily because that's where your strength is. The Word of God is our strength. And if we don't study the Word of God, we don't have the power we need because we have to feed the Holy Spirit daily to keep us where we need to be. And if we don't have the power, it doesn't mean that we're not believers. It doesn't mean we're not saved. It doesn't mean we're not going to heaven. But it does mean that we don't have the victory here in this life that God wants us to have, doesn't That's it? That's right. And oh, the power, the only power we have is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the most powerful thing in the universe. And the Holy Spirit's alive and well in us. But we have to feed it to keep it where it needs to be. And, and keep surrendered to it as That's well. Right. Because we have to totally surrender to it. Yeah, we, have a, we still have a flesh nature that loves to sneak in there, at least I do anyway. I don't know about the rest of y'all. You know, maybe you're all you know, purified and holy and sanctified. I'm still working on it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I know my flesh likes to get real sneaky and sneak in there and usurp the That's Holy right. Spirit's place and start asserting his own will, his own perceptions, his, you know. And, and, and before I know it, you know, I have been... I've been taken off track, and, and all of a sudden, I, now I'm following my own flesh, not following the Holy Spirit anymore. One of the you keys can't to, have that. One of the keys to all this is we've got to understand one scripture. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The love of the world is in you, and the love of the Father is not. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, these are not of the Father, but of the world. And the world is passing away with the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Now think about those.
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. Our eyes get us in a lot of trouble. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. You know, these are all the things we battle on a daily basis. And we've got to remember daily, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. And that's what he's here for. And so we got a battle just like the Terminator picture. Yep. We got a battle going on every, the minute you get out of bed in the morning, you're stepping into a war zone. And you got to realize that. Yeah, and, and too many take that fight too lightly. That's right. And they want, they want to deny its existence. They, they want to pretend like it ain't there. Uh, but it is there. And, right. you know, and there is, a, there is a roaring lion out there who walks about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And, you know, we have everything that we need to combat him. We have, we have the Word of God, which makes God's ways known and makes Satan's ways known. So we don't have to be confused about what's sin and what's not. We have the Jesus Christ, the Amen. propitiation Amen. for our sins, uh, you know, so we, so our sin debt has been taken care of, and we have the Holy Spirit that gives us the mind of Christ and seals us against the day of wrath that is coming on the sons of disobedience. Uh, but if we don't know how to use these things that we have been given, you know, you know, we're going to be like we're going to be like the Israelis in, living in the Promised Land without any testimony of the power of God behind them. Let's go back to Jesus for a minute. He said in Matthew 28, I think it was 18, all authority, he didn't say some authority, he said all authority has been given me in heaven and earth. And so he gave us that, oh, we have all authority through him. Mm -hmm. But if we don't use that authority, you know, it's just like you got to go in a house and you, there's lights in a house, but unless you turn on the switch, the lights don't go on. Exactly. Well, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the power of God in us. But we, if we don't turn on the lights, the light don't go on. Exactly. He said, these signs will follow them yes. who believe. That's right. In, in my name, they will lay hands on the sick and see, and see them recover. In my name, they will cast out demons. Absolutely. But if we don't know how to do that, or if we don't have the faith to do that, then what happens? Well, <laughs> but George, we got a problem. Our country right now, only 24% of Americans believe the word of God is the Bible is the Word of God and take it literally. That means 76% of Americans today don't believe this Word. Our nation's in trouble. And that's why there's so many addiction. That's why everybody's running rampant. And I love it where people say, well, marijuana's all right. Marijuana won't hurt you. You ask any law enforcement officer, marijuana is the gateway drug to everything else. It's the it's the key, it's a key that unlocks the door. Yeah, and uh, the proponents say, well, it's not addictive, and it ha has all these wonderful medical benefits, and and all of this stuff. How should the church be responding to uh, to the the legalization of recreational marijuana? Well, they have to understand it's a drug, and it's a, it's the gateway to every other drug, and it just opens the door to Pandora's box. There's no two ways about it. I agree. I, I have to agree with you. Okay. I've, I've never seen a, you know, somebody who's really, you know, a heavy pot user who was also a productive member of society. I, I have yet to see that. No. Um, you know. Well, you've got people driving around stoned all the time. Doesn't that make you feel encouraged, you know, encourage you to feel safe? And yeah, thing, exactly. We, we, we just struggle with so many addictions, but today our, our society's turned its back on God. And it's just opened up the door to every addiction there is. One of the addictions we're struggling with today is gambling addiction. That is destroying more lives than anything I've ever seen. Because now they've made it legal in Illinois. In other words, every fast stop, every place you turn, they got slot machines, they got gambling. We're, that's the number one problem we're facing today at Addiction Free in Christ, is people struggling with uh, that addiction is just destroying our families. Mm -hmm. It's at least destroying our families. Yeah, we we have to we have to learn how to how to stand and, and confront it in a godly manner and take and take this land back. Well, let, um, let's stop just a minute and think about gambling addiction. Mm -hmm. Every dime that comes through our hands is God's money. It's God's money, and we take God's money and we use it for everything except where it belongs. 
And we've got to understand, this is God's money we're throwing away. It's not ours. You know, the problem is people don't understand that. They think it's my money. Everything is mine. Well, it's all, everything we have is a gift from God. And we have to understand that. And we're just stewards of it. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Well, uh, our time has supernaturally expired on us, Pastor okay. Jerry. Um, so uh, just real quick, how can folks get in touch with you if they need help in this area? They can call us at 217-617-5577. Or they can do our, go to our website, RevJerryAddictionFreeInChrist.com. So, Jerry, any last thoughts for the folks before we wrap up the show? Yes, I want people to understand it's not only people with addictions. We're helping people with anxiety, worry, fear, depression, and various addictions because God is still the answer to every problem we face. Appreciate you, Jerry. Why don't you go ahead and uh, offer up a quick prayer for our yes. viewers, and, uh, and we'll close out the show. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for this time. We thank you for George, Father. We thank you for WTJR, where these are being broadcasted. And Father, we want everyone out there to know that God loves them more than anything else in the world. And all they need to do, if they need help, is just call on Jesus. Just ask him, say, Lord, I know I've sinned against you. I want to surrender my life to you today. And Jesus Christ will do the rest. And George, again, thank you for having us today. Thank you for coming on, yes, Pastor Jay. Appreciate God it. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank you.